Hi, my name is Ramsey. I have a company named Ramsart in which I make sustainable kink and BDSM creations. I was invited to visit Ramsey in their beautiful studio in Amsterdam and get to see and hear more about the creations they make. Today we're in my studio where I make fetish and BDSM harnesses out of recycled leather and I also make whips and floggers that are also used in BDSM scenes and for personal use and also therapeutic uses for people interested in impact play and sensation play. I also do shibari art here which is bondage on the body both for aesthetic purposes for performances and whatnot and also for therapeutic purposes so for people who want to engage with sensational experience of what it feels like to have their body confined in ropes which can be very beneficial for people who want to do trauma release or letting go of positions of power so also kind of playing with power dynamics and things like that and I also do painting on wood in acrylic. I do mostly fetish paintings, uh, exploring human connection as well as connection to self in pain and in pleasure. My company is called Ramsart. I do everything under that name. Ramsey is also passionate about making sure to run the business in a sustainable way. Most of the work I do here is from recycled materials. It started just because I really like making things from garbage. I think it's really interesting. Also, a lot of the practices I do, I'm quite meticulous in my vision, very specific image when I start of how it's going to turn out. And the recycling aspect kind of made that a bit less controllable. Like the materials were coming in already in a kind of state that I had to work with, so I knew less at the beginning of a piece what it was going to turn into, so it felt like a different collaboration between me and the materials. In addition to that, using recycled materials as a wonderful part of having a business that's sustainable because I'm taking garbage that would otherwise have gone to waste and giving them a new life with these beautiful objects that people can love and cherish and utilize for many years beyond the time where they would have gone to a dump or something, which I really appreciate because the amount of waste that goes into making anything, it really does something for my brain to watch me almost have no waste when I finish a piece because everything came from waste to begin with. It feels really nice to have a sustainable business that's able to do that. And the reason that they've chosen to work specifically with kink and BDSM ties in with their personal life. I started to get into a bit of BDSM and kink into the, the world, into the community a little bit. This was also going on at a time that I was also getting into what it meant for me to have body dysphoria and what it felt like to feel embodied uh, within myself and beautiful and useful tool uh, playing with sensations of pain and pleasure could be for someone who felt disembodied or felt dysphoria in their body to help to reconnect to that part of yourself. Almost this snapback into presence when being in states of pain and pleasure and the how close those things are in the brain in how your body re reacts and can connect to those sensations. So the pleasure that can come out of pain. We're gonna get back to the connection between BDSM and body dysphoria soon. But first, there's one other aspect of BDSM and kink that really drew Ramsey to this community. I think that playing in kink and BDSM spaces gives people this permission to play like they did as children in adult settings, which upon first seeing, it was just such a beautiful 
like in the way that we pretend when we're children, in the way that we engage when we're children, it just seemed like this space where people were given permission to play and to be and let their desires just be there and simultaneously be like evolved beyond that point because you get involved in consent and conversation and connection and there's intention in the desire to let go into what people want and how they want to feel in themselves and with others and connect in ways that are really authentic because the curtain is kind of down because they've stepped into a place that is about letting go of who they think they need to be for other people, which I think is really beautiful. Okay, let's get back to how BDSM has helped Ramsey through their body dysphoria. Around like mid-teens, I'm gonna say like 17, 18 is when the gender dys dysphoria started to sink in, in my body, but I didn't really have the words for it or the ability to even understand that within myself. But I suffered a lot in my mental health due to it. And I had breast reduction surgery done when I was young because gender affirming surgeries weren't really known to me or made available. And I couldn't really understand that that's what I wanted at the time. But, you know, I went to a surgeon and I was like, I don't feel right in here with something doesn't feel quite right. And they didn't really have the ability to help me at the time either. So that's all to say that the experience of being in my body was either, you know, my brain trying its best to disassociate from the discomfort of it, or, you know, at times, uh, when I got a bit older, I went down pathways of self-harm, which was not out of a desire of like, I need to hurt myself, but was down a pathway of, I just want to feel in my body at all. So that was a symptom of feeling mentally unwell and entirely disembodied and feeling desperate to feel present in my own body without really ever knowing how. And so my default kind of became disassociation. And when I found this space of BDSM and kink and started trying to have this conscious connection to my body, the intensity and also the intention in that process in that relationship to BDSM or impact or pain in my body was, it was like reconnecting the pathways that had disconnected in that time that I felt so disengaged from what it was like to feel in my body, to feel present in here, and to also feel like I belonged in my own body. So, I started really looking at it at a certain point as a therapeutic modality. And this is also how they got into rope therapy. I am not in any way, shape or form qualified to perform therapy on anyone. But uh, when I started tying people in bondage, I would let them come in and talk about what they wanted to let go of or what they wanted to explore for themselves and not give any kind of verbal feedback, but just take time to ground with that person and what they wanted to explore within themselves. So in no way guiding them in any kind of direction and making it very clear that it was a journey that they were going to take by themselves. I would just be there to hold space and also to perform the kind of bondage <laughs> that they were looking for, the sensational experience that they were looking for. And the sessions always went in different directions. Some people wanted to, you know, resist it and then be able to let go into it, whatever kind of process they wanted to have, I wanted to hold space for. I did it for several years and just accumulated the experience from 
every person I worked with. And it was so incredible to then see the, like, the narrative that I'm talking about now, the, the kink in the BDSM and the therapy that it provided for me of reconnecting to myself and letting go of feelings I had about myself and my body, by extension my mind, and so on. I got to see it happen in other people and have my own experience made more clear by watching it from the outside and watching the impact it had on me because it's not like while I was in all of these situations, I could be like, mm, I can feel my connective pathways being healed by this process. But that is the result of all of it. And the reason I do the work in it now with making the floggers and doing the paintings and everything like that is also because I now want to talk about that experience and that benefit. And that led to another project that Ramsey started. So I started doing workshops some years ago about destigmatizing conversations surrounding sexuality. And this was a component of it because it is something that has such a colored image for people. In my perspective anyway, people seem to have this idea of what kink and BDSM is. And it's either a curiosity or a very strange painted picture for people and I don't think a lot of people have an idea of what the personal benefits it can have. One of the reasons I've integrated this so heavily into the work that I do is so that I can talk from the benefits of the experience that I've had and also draw awareness to safety and security and everything because people don't tend to get brought into, you know, curiosities of kink or BDSM with necessarily someone holding their hand being like, okay, when it comes to whips, like, don't hit someone here, don't hit someone here, you know, look out for their kidneys, like this kind of kink education that I think should be integrated into sex education and pleasure education. They talk about an example that many people might have tried in their bedroom. Many people want to play with ropes as a form of connection and a little bit of power play or what have you, but people don't know the safety aspects also of working with ropes. Like, you should always have safety scissors handy. You need to check people's circulation. Tying in a certain way is important because you don't get slip knots that can cut off people's circulation. To check with people's, like to check in and to practice consent and all these things. So I also try to do some workshops in that kind of stuff, doing like bare minimum gateway stuff to try to make everything more safe for people because the stigma around talking about these things results in a lot of people just being ignorant to what's safe. Ramsey wanted to end this video on something that they've been reflecting about. I've talked to someone before about what I do being such an expression of queerness in the way that as queer people, we are often so abject from society. What I mean by that is even in our acceptance, we are made othered. And that's also okay, because difference is not a negative thing. And I want to see the pathways of queerness in that no matter what we're told we're supposed to be by society, connecting to who we want to be or who we are internally is really at the core of living good lives, I think. And the work that I do is also, I think, an expression of that same thread in that we stigmatize certain things and we hold perceptions on certain things and they're all fallacies because what matters is your own personal experience with them. And so in the spirit of being with oneself and being connected to the life that you want to live, I encourage people to let go of their perceptions and their presumptions and try to live in a way that makes them happy and 
play like a child and find the joy in all things.